I know most of you know how to do this, but I've got some tips and subtleties that will make this way better. So if you are interested, keep watching. How's it going guys? And welcome back. My name is James Pena and this channel was created to show you the hidden pieces of certain pieces of sleight of hand or even just to improve up what you may already know. Today we will be learning the one-handed top pop. Yeah, that's right, I said it, one-handed top pop. Now, I've already went over this, but it was, it was kind of like a quick overview. I probably should have went more into detail, but uh, that's what this video is for. Um, I'll leave the link, uh, I forget which side, I think it's gonna be this side, somewhere up here. Uh, I'll put it in the description be uh, below so you can see uh, what video I'm talking about. Uh, I show you the one hand top palm, I show you a cop. I think it's just those two. I think it's just the, the classic palm and the uh, gamblers cop. But I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth for the one handed top palm. Now, it's really important for you to understand the palm and to learn how to do the palm because it it's like the foundation of card magic right i don't know if you've ever heard it uh but it's pretty much the the three basics for card magic is control a double lift and a palm if you can learn those three you can create pretty much miracle literally any other slight is almost obsolete or it's just you trying to i don't know improve the dexterity in your hands uh, but mainly, uh, those are the three principles that you want to learn for card magic. Those are the three basic uh, slights that you want to perfect. When learning the palming correctly, you can literally do some impossible things. You can, um, obviously the basic card to pocket, even though it's so basic among all magicians. But if you kind of view that from a spectator's point of view, it's impossible. It's like, how, when the hell did it get to that pocket, you know? Uh, but it's not just card to pocket, you could do card to box, right? And a little different variation of that, but not only that, but you can literally do a production with a palm. You could probably do some cool vanishes, and sometimes you don't even have to do it as an effect. You could use it as a tool to help you get to a certain effect that you are trying to create. So a palm is really, really, really important for you to learn. So I, I think this is why I also wanted to make another video, but I also did have a viewer that commented on... Uh, I don't know, he wanted me to make a video on being more in depth with it, so it's for him, this is for you man, and for any other viewers that may have been you know, a little stuck on my last video. Before we get into today's video, uh, I just wanna show you that we, how today's video is gonna go is we're gonna be discussing the mechanics. After the mechanics, I want to go over the angle sensitivity. And lastly, I want to discuss tips and subtleties and certain uses, or my uses, for the one-handed top palm, which looks something a little bit like this. So all these are, that, that is basically an overview of today's video. So enough of me talking, let's get straight to the tutorial. So obviously for uh, today's video, we are going to need a deck of cards. Uh, here I have the SWE cards, the SW Erdnays cards. I believe they're printed by uh, Daniel Madison, but this is what they look like, kind of all around. Just a just a quick deck review. Now I'm not gonna fully go into this, but uh, this is what the cards look like. Uh, they're a little uh, off white because they're uh, I've, I've used them before. Uh, oh, don't need that. And the Jokers. And the faces are pretty standard. These are in new deck order, so let me shuffle these real quick and then uh, we'll start getting the video. Done shuffling. All right, they're uh, now in a, they're kind of just in a messy order. So the first thing I, I want to go over is how to hold the deck when you are doing the one-handed top pop, all right? So how you want to hold it? It just looks like this. Don't, uh, if you're watching this and you have a deck with you, don't start mimicking my moves. Just pay attention to the video and then I'll tell you when to kind of Follow along with me if that makes sense. So for right now, this is kind of what it looks like. This is the, the grip for it. Now I know this looks weird to hold a deck, but usually you're holding it like this. And I'll get more into it on when you should change this finger out or when you're about to do the pop. But if you're just holding the deck kind of regularly, uh, you, you want to hold it like this. This is more natural. But when you want to do the palm, it's this. And you'll see why. But Again, that's what it looks like, just so you have an overview. Okay, so this is how you hold the deck. 
Now what makes uh, what makes the card go into palm? All right, so again, just watch, don't follow just yet. You want to, because the, the whole principle of a palm, right, is this, correct? That's what it looks like, pinky here, and then over here with the base at them. I believe a lot of people know that. If you didn't know that, well, you learned something new today. But that's what it looks like, right? Now, be aware of where exactly it is on the pinky. Where on the pinky and exactly where in the thumb. Thumb's not as important. The pinky, however, should be precise. What I want you to do, now I want you to follow along, is place that pinky where you felt your palm, right? Place it here, all right? Where you felt that card when you were normally palming it, actually place it here, if that makes sense. All right, that's what I want you to do. Place it there, all right? Now again, you're following along. Now you're going to just rest your fingers here. All right? And then your thumb is, it's not on top, right? It's kind of like, kind of like that, kind of perpendicular. I think that's the other uh, word for it. Kind of perpendicular with the, with the deck. All right, so your pinky here and your thumb here. You got it? Hopefully you do. Now that you have the, the grip set up, now again, now this part, I want you to just watch. Don't follow along. Now, now you want the a certain pressure with the pinky finger. Oh, before I move on. If you don't have the right placement, the card will go somewhere else. So let's say if your card is a little bit like I'm right-handed, right? If your pinky is a little bit to the left of that, if you watch, right? You see how the card sticks out? Right. This is a little exaggerated, right? And this is where a lot of people had a problem. And this is also why I created the channel for my viewer that had that question. This is usually what happens, right? This is usually what happens. So you want to make sure it's touching, All right? And then again, now, okay. Now I'm back to where I uh, originally started. And now I just want you to watch, just watch. So when you place a certain pressure, that pinky puts it straight into palm. All right. Now that you've seen it, now I want you to follow along. So go back to that grip. I'll give you a second. Once you're in that grip, what I want you to do is apply a certain pressure with the pinky. If you if you go too much, right? If you extend it, you see how I'm extending it really far. It's going to be a little off. Now you see it's not off to the side as it was exaggerated, but you see how it's kind of off with the palm? Like a palm is normally like this, right? But if you extend too much, it can come off to this side, right? And that's not what you want. You want it to be as much as in your hand as possible. You get your card, it's getting kind of warped. It's also a little hot in here. So again, you have replacement. Now follow along, push, all right, and tuck. Um, right now I got two cards, but in a bit I'm going to explain why that happens, right? But for now, ignore it. I just messed up. So, just put pressure and you should be able to grab that card, okay? Just focus on the pressure. If you miss it, that's fine. Just focus on pressure. But now we need to focus on the thumb. Now, remember what I said, the thumb is not as important, but it's something you still need to be aware of as it just happened to me earlier, as you just witnessed, right? So the whole point of the two cards kind of popping out, right, into your your palm is because of your thumb. This is what I mean. So, so right now, I want you to stop following along and kind of just observe. So what happens, if I don't put any pressure, right, there's, I'm not putting any pressure, I'm, it's just there, right? And I go full forth, right? Two cards, you see how, this is already starting to lift up. I think it's because I'm doing it slow or I don't know if it's maybe these cards. This is a really bad example, by the way. Uh, but if you don't have the correct pressure with your thumb, two cards, oh, there you go. I just did it. If you don't have a correct pressure with your thumb, two cards are going to pop off into your hand and you don't want that. How do you fix it? So it never happens, right? So you've got your placement with the pinky. Placement with the four fingers, 
and now your thumb. Your thumb, again, is just perpendicular to the deck. Now, this, this knuckle right here, this portion that's literally aligned with this top card is pushing, is kind of giving it that pressure, right? That's what's putting the pressure. And when you put the pressure on it, combined with the pinky, it creates the one-handed top pop. And that's what it looks like. And that is that is uh, pretty much how you do the one-handed top. Well, that's, I'm sorry, the mechanics on how you do the one-handed top pop. Uh, real quick, another thing that kind of helps with this one-handed top pop is if you bend the deck, just a, just a little bit, just give it a bend downward. It'll help when you pop it off. It, I don't, it just worked for me anytime. Anytime I don't do it, I usually have more cases of the, the double cards going into my hand. But if I just literally do this before I pop it off, it works. It works every single time. Now I want to talk about angles. So angles for this is uh, it's pretty, it's pretty all around it, if you know what you're doing, right? So if obviously if you're here on the left, that'd probably be your, your weaker side, right? Freaking you obviously don't want to do this because everyone and their mother is going to see that. So I'm going to tell you right now, that's, that's a really, there's not really a good way to cover it unless you're like, like that. But again, you, you'd literally be showing everybody on the right side of it. Right? So just know your left side's a little weaker, right? If all attention is to the deck, then yes, people are going to see it. Now, if I hold it forward like this, right? Obviously you can see that. So maybe tilt your wrist downward, right? And that's maybe what you you probably want to do. So you're here, and maybe, and you can see less that way. Now, on your right side, you you probably you probably have a little bit more cover, right? Because I just did it, and it, it's actually pretty natural. A lot of people on the right hand, right side, probably will not see that. Now I, I did say earlier that this is a pretty it's almost angle proof if you do it right. If you remember me saying that. So now I'm moving on to my tips and subtlety. So one thing you really want to do is misdirect. So let's say you're doing a card to pocket, right? I have the four diamonds. I'm going to just do this quick, very crudely. Let's say I come here. I have it. It's gone. Right? I actually come here. It's not here, but it's here, right? I'm not gonna stand up just because I'm just teaching you. I, I just I just want you to know what's going on. But anyway, but you see how when you focus attention somewhere else, you could you're most likely able to get away with it, right? No matter what angle. So remember how I said the left angle is probably really bad. But if you were to do that same little routine right there, and you came here, right, and you dropped your hand and actually went in your pocket, and let's say you were actually digging. If you were to do this, no one would be the wiser. And you'd be able to conceal a palm pretty easily. One little tip that you can uh, do with the uh, one-handed top palm is not just as a card to pocket, right? You could actually do this as a color change. And uh, this is a little bonus tip if you stayed watching here this long, which uh, I hope you did. Uh, but if you didn't, I guess, uh, every I guess you're gonna miss this part. Um, so color change, right? If you get two cards, you get a double lift and just execute the one handed top off, right? You can, you can shake it and it will change and you can change it back if you want. You can act like go on the, the motion as if you're giving them you're like, Oh look, is this your card? Oh no, it's not your card here. Have the deck. And now you're concealing this card and giving them this. Another, another way you could do this. It's a, it's a subtlety for when you're actually palming the card. Let's say you don't want to go to your pocket. How else can you misdirect? Right, this is kind of back to the uh, misdirection section. But here's the thing. So let's say to a space and you want to palm it off and not for a card to pocket. What I do is I kind of like, if I have a watch, I'll like readjust my watch or sometimes literally I'll just do this where can I'll cover it and kind of like act like my wrist is hurting and then I'll give it to him and then successfully, successfully palming off the card. I don't know, like that motion, like 
when as I'm teaching it to you, you're probably looking at me and you're like, bro, that doesn't work. That's that's trash, right? But if you just pull it off naturally, literally just me doing this, right? It's literally enough cover for me to do the actual palming motion. Uh, don't understand why that works. I, I I don't know. For some, just one day I was just like, oh, what if I just did this? And then while my hand was over, I palmed the car. And literally ever since that day, uh, that's actually a motion I use to kind of cover the action of palming up the car. Now that I've showed you all my uh, tips and subtleties, let's move on to the outro. To uh, my new viewers out there, if this is the type of video that interests you, then please hit subscribe. I post every Friday, or at least I try to, but I do make that effort to post videos for you guys every Friday. To all my returning viewers, just as always, if there's anything that you didn't like about today's video, or if you have comments or questions, and even more questions of how you want to do the pump, don't be afraid. I will and I will always try to answer all my uh, viewers' questions. If it's like, I don't know, you, you just don't know how to do something and it wasn't explained properly in the video, you know? So go ahead and leave it in the comments below if it's something you want to work on. But if there wasn't any concerns and you genuinely, keyword genuinely, like today's video, then please hit the like button. Please hit subscribe. It helps me out, helps you out, helps this channel grow, right? And that's what we want. Last thing to add, if there's anything you want to see, if there's a slight that maybe you're working on that I haven't discussed yet, and you want me to showcase my tips and subtleties on that specific slide, then leave it in the comments below so I can work on a video. Uh, I'll even reply to your comments saying, hey, this is what I'll work on for this Friday or this or the next video or the next two videos in case somebody else has wanted another, you know, request, right? Uh, but besides that, I think that's all I have to say. So I will see you in next week's video. So peace.